a walkthrough of ServiceNow's DevOps module. ServiceNow's DevOps module is focused around two main pieces, collection of data, uh, ultimately to feed things like dashboards, as you see now, to provide metrics and understanding, gain an understanding of what's going on. And the second part is collect that data to uh, identify the quality or the risk associated to, uh, to a pending deployment. The second part is the automatic change creation, where from a pipeline, you can trigger the creation of a change, collect the data or associate the data that was already collected and show that in a way that both auditing and change approval, like the CAB or the change management team can decide whether or not this is a change that is good for production. And we can also tie that to uh, automatic evaluation uh, under certain conditions, automatically approve a change and make sure that that feeds back to the pipeline for automated deployment, which means a zero touch from code to deployment process. We'll just reenact the uh, development cycle. We're using Jira for stories, GitHub for the code repository and Jenkins as our pipeline automation tool. I'll just quickly create a task. And grab some of the detail of this. One of the things we'll also be showing is how we can have good hygiene and use that to evaluate whether or not a change is in good order. So just grab the number. I'm going into uh, one of our repositories. I'm just going to directly make a change to an existing file. Yeah. Satisfied with what I've done, I'm going to my the changes. and ensure that I commit directly to the branch. When I do that, it will kick off the pipeline. So let's really check on that status on, uh, on Jenkins here and we'll see, show up the uh, actual development here, the build of the pipeline. So it's, there we go, it's 349. And after the test runs, you can see that here it says that the job is under change control. So at the end of the pipeline in the last step after we do packaging and UAT automated testing, we're going to production. But before we can move the code to production, we are creating and validating a change. This change exists in service now. And one of the things we've done is tie that into a, a chat ops capability where as soon as that change is there, that information is shared with the uh, with the engineers that are uh, in the same channel. In this case, we're using Slack. And as soon as that comes up, we'll pull in Slack so you can see what, see what that looks like. So we're waiting for this generation. Part of what's happening at this point is that, uh, like I said, the data that we've created, the story, uh, the code changes, and any test results that we're running as part of this uh, pipeline are all getting associated to the change, making sure that we have anything related to the artifact that we're actually trying to push to production. And once that's done, uh, the change is pushed to its approval phase. You should be able to see that. Let me just quickly see if it's showing up. Okay, the, uh, the new change has just been created. As you can see, there's a 385. If we click through to that change, before going to the approval step, you can see that it has collected data, the data it's collecting here is mappable. So you decide what kind of information you want to see on these automatically created changes. And you can pull in the information, obviously that's available to you as part of that entire development cycle. Uh, just to focus in at the bottom here, you can see that there are a few added tabs around commits, work items, test summaries, and artifacts. So let's briefly dive into those while, uh, while the change generation, the approval is out. Here we can see the commitment uh, or the commit that happened. And there's actually information like the link back to the actual uh, uh, commit URL. We see the, uh, the details or the metadata, so to speak, including the information that I've added. And you can also see here that we're, we have information like the branch is related to. And we even see the tie into the work item that I created because I had good hygiene, because I included the reference to the story 
in my commit message, it also uh, has found the related work item and these two are now tied together. The fact that this relation exists, I can actually use to decide whether or not the, the, the request for deployment is actually in good state. Let me just pull in the chat for a second. So here you can see we're in a CI CD pipeline uh, channel that the change you were looking at has, uh, has been pushed for manual approval because we failed one of the checks. The number of checks and what kind of checks you do here is obviously a choice. Your, your organization decides which, uh, which items you think are relevant. For our demo purposes, we're using a number of changes, number of code lines, uh, codes, uh, lines of code that changed, but you can do all kinds of things. We can look into the current state, like P1s in the last 30 days. We can see if there's any incidents uh, generally open, so you can set limits to how many active incidents there are or pro problem tasks to identify maybe fundamental issues. And the one I just referenced, commits without stories. So because we do the tie-in, we can actually say if there's a commit that's being pushed but doesn't have an associated story, that's bad hygiene. We don't want to automatically approve that. So in this case, I failed one of the checks. We can obviously fail multiple checks and a manual approval is required. The, uh, for this presentation purposes, I'm also part of the change management team. So if you look at the, uh, the change record for a second here at the bottom, you can see that the, uh, the approval request includes people in a change management team. I'm assuming that role so I can approve directly from chat here. When I do that, the change obviously gets approved and we're sending that information back to the pipeline. So if we go back here, we will see that this will change from under change control to a completion. We don't do a lot obviously in this presentation pipeline. Um, but as soon as that's done, we have the web hook back into this and tell the pipeline to continue. So while we're waiting for that to complete, oh, there we go already. So as you can see now, it's a successful completion of the pipeline and the artifact has been deployed to production. The change, obviously, because we've done, let me reload this one for a sec. Of course, the change is done, is now ready to be uh, reviewed and we've closed it, there we go. And you can see that the approval was given here as well. The last part they want to show on is that decision list. So if you remember that uh, approval segment showing a bunch of uh, checks that we're doing, I just want to show you the configuration of it. So here's actually the, the policy, change policy we're using to identify those. You can see where the inputs, the things we care about, we saw on that list, like open incidents and P1s and failed tests. And we can then decide through a decision whether or not that should lead to auto approval or manual approval is required. Let's open up briefly the auto approval and complete this walkthrough. And here you can see, for instance, that the, uh, the number of code changes should be less than three. Uh, the uh, number of P1s, you can have no P1 in the last 30 days. We can have no commits that are not tied to a story. There can be any open problem tasks, et cetera. So as soon as any of these conditions um, are not met, basically, it cannot be auto approved. We fall into the manual approval set. So again, fully configurable, depending on the things that are important to you. From here, you can decide whether or not the change can continue. And with that, I will conclude this walkthrough. If you have any questions, please reach out to RevDev.